guys, I wanted to present this story to you guys, and it's really crazy. And it seems like all of these stories are really crazy, but nonetheless, there's a story kind of made out of Tennessee, and it bothers me for a lot of different reasons, but let me tell you the story first. The story surrounds this baby girl that you see on my screen. That is Destiny Oliver. Destiny Oliver was five years old. She's just a baby, okay? I remember vividly when my daughter was five years old, such a joy to be around. This baby has a radiant, beautiful, beautiful smile. And she was robbed of her life. And what's crazy about this is it seems like we are telling this story all the time that it seems like it's the parents that are doing all of these bad things to these kids. And I don't want anything bad to happen to these kids at all, but it's even more sad when the person who is responsible for bringing you in this world is the one who is responsible for taking you out of it. I know some of y'all have heard that growing up in y'all households, but it's not a good thing. It's never a good thing to hear somebody say, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. That's a horrible thing to say to your kids. Like, I don't know how you expect your kids to love you and respect you when you say stuff like that. But nonetheless, a Tennessee mother is suspected of fatally shooting her own five-year-old daughter in the chest before giving investigators conflicting stories about the incident. So this mom did something heinous and then she turned around and lied about it. How about that? She lied about it. Are you guys surprised? All these liars, all week long, past two weeks, everybody's lying. But her lie makes it more egregious because if you read the title, then you know that this mother actually tried to blame her daughter's death on her own two-year-old toddler child. How about that for a narrative? Just hold that thought. We'll come back to it. That woman, Robin Howington, who looks like she has been drugged through the mud and just that face, boy, she looked like she's a good 65 in the face. Let's back it up. That woman is 37 years old. She is my age, 37 years old, and she's been indicted by a grand jury of first degree murder, child neglect, false reporting, which is good because they're finally starting to get these people for the lies, tampering with evidence and attempting tampering with evidence from a September 14, 2019 death of her own daughter, that beautiful angel soul, Destiny Oliver, five years old, that baby right there, that was her daughter. She was arrested by Knox County Sheriff's Office on Wednesday and held on a $500,000 bond. If you ask me, I don't know how she gets a bond at all and maybe the bond should have been a little bit higher considering the fact that this was her own kid. But I digress. Now, last year, authorities were dispatched to the mother's Fountain City neighborhood home to find the young girl had been shot. And that's according to the Knoxville News Sentinel. Hashtag not my words. Everybody talks about I get my facts wrong, but they won't go check the people that are actually putting out the facts for the police and the courts. So it's strange to me that they get mad about me telling you what the courts are going to say. All right. Now the baby destiny was taken to university of Tennessee medical center, but she did not survive and she was pronounced dead. Now when investigators asked the mother would try to pass blame on four others. First lie. She told investigators that an unidentified man broke into their home and shot her daughter once in the chest before fleeing in a black Chrysler 300. Now, the mother later claimed that the girl's father, which is lie number two, the biological father is a guy named Antoine Oliver. So if Antoine Oliver is out there listening, if he wants to contact us, the email is the AFC at gmail.com. And let us know why this woman would tell a lie on you like this. She said that her own baby daddy was the culprit who shot their daughter before escaping in a black Chrysler 300. 
The biological dad is who she tried to pin this on. Initially, it was just some random man. Now she tries to pin it on the biological father, but it gets worse, okay? Now she claimed that Antoine Oliver shot their daughter after a tense argument between them. Around this time, authorities discovered a handgun hidden in the bush outside of the mother's home. Now the mother, again, her name is Robin. So Robin next claimed that her boyfriend, Daniel Hensley, who was not Destiny's father, had hidden the handgun in a bush outside her home. She is trying to pin all of this on every single man that she know, including random phantom men. Isn't this crazy? She claimed her own boyfriend by the name of Daniel Hensley, who was not Destiny's father. Destiny's father is a man named Antoine Oliver. So that's at least three different people she's tried to blame this on. And she blamed him and said he hit the gun inside, outside a bush of her home. But here's the caveat. You guys know how she got caught? Y'all want to know how the mom got caught? <laughs> I'm going to give y'all a chance to guess. They found out the mom was lying because of surveillance footage. Surveillance footage. How many of you guys are surprised by that? And you know what? It makes it even, it makes you wonder really like, what would you, like, would you really want to know all the lies that people tell if you could just capture everything on video evidence? I think it's a crazy thing to think that somebody can tell you one thing and you should be able to believe people. But you know what? Grown people learn how to incentivize lies and elicit sympathy, especially women. It's not a knock to all women, but it is a lot of them in these type of situations, okay? Cops saw her own surveillance footage from a neighbor hiding the firearm among the shrubbery. So there, there was a neighbor who had some type of surveillance, and it's good that they did because they found out that this chick was lying on camera. Now, once the mother was confronted with the evidence, she allegedly admitted to hiding the weapon in the bushes, but she claims it was out of maternal instinct. How about that? Crazy, huh? Now, continuing her spin on this story, the mother in her most shocking claim then told investigators that she wiped the gun down and stashed the gun. I'm going to say that again. She wiped the gun down, wiping her fingerprints off of it, and she tried to hide it and stashed it. But now she tries to say that it was her own two-year-old son who discovered her gun that was in a closet inside of her house, and she said that the toddler, the two-year-old toddler was the one that shot his own five-year-old sister. Now y'all tell me that's not low down and dirty and definitely a goddamn shame. What kind of an individual, let's back this up. What kind of an individual is this that she just loves nobody at all? She don't love her baby dad, the biological father, the man that she laid down and made these kids with in order to, to create a legacy. She didn't love him because she, she tried to blame it on him. Then the man who she's currently sleeping with, her boyfriend, she tried to pin it on him. So apparently she didn't love him either. She tried to also pin it on some random man who broke in her house, which we'll get to that here in a moment. Then if you have no more love in your heart, she was so low down and a horrible woman and a horrible individual, a horrible human being that she tried to pin this on her own two-year-old son just so she could save her own skin. And I gotta tell you, there is nothing more despicable than that. There is nothing. Nothing more despicable than that. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I think I find it very strange the fact that I continue to keep getting emails and people contacting me talking about 
Jay, you need to take your videos down. You need to take all your videos down because what you're doing is you're spreading information that's not true about these parents. Well, let's think about this for a moment. The police have done investigations and they have surveillance footage. People saw her and said something. They're going to present that evidence in court against these people, which is how they ended up getting the charges against them. In the first place, they get these charges because they feel like beyond the shadow of a doubt, they will be able to prove that these people are guilty in court based on what they charge them with, which is why they they are really, really careful how they charge somebody and what they charge people with. Because they're like, you know what? If we charge you with murder, we're going to convict you of murder. We, we, have, we feel pretty confident that we're going to have a high success rate of getting you convicted. That's the way it works. So why would people tell me that I got my information wrong when I'm using the information, the same exact information that the courts are going to use against them? But what I find even more strange, because it's only a few of those people, it's not a lot of them, but they do show up in the comments. Some of y'all in the chat have seen them in the comments section from time to time. But those people always come out in defense. In defense of one of the parents, one of the thugs, one of these hood holes or whatever the case is, they always come out in defense of them, but you never ever hear them come out in defense of a child. Nobody defends the babies, except for the AFC, except for us. We're the only ones that point this thing out. It seems like we're the only ones that care. Now I do believe that there are more people out there that do care. Let me give a shout out to people like Early Walker out there in Chicago, a concerned businessman and also give a shout out to Dana Brockaway in Oklahoma City from the NAACP and the Dear John uh, programs. They care about children. They put themselves on the front line all the time in order to try to advocate for these babies. But somehow they try to tell us that our voices don't matter and I just don't believe that. I think our voices do matter, but let's keep going. Now, that mother right there Robin Howington's boyfriend later told investigators, which his name is Daniel Hensley. He said that he witnessed her brandished a gun at Destiny's father the day of the shooting. Wow. But you know what? I can't blame the boyfriend for telling on his girlfriend when his girlfriend tried to blame him for the murder of her own daughter. Okay. So he told the truth. And the father reportedly took the gun away from the mom. But it's unclear what led up to the shooting, subsequently the death of Destiny Oliver on September 14th. Now the indictment states that the mother did unlawfully kill Destiny Oliver during the perpetration of aggravated child neglect. The tampering charges stem from the mother reportedly trying to destroy her cell phone and moving furniture around the night of Destiny's death, which shows that she was trying to stage that something else happened, which is also a lie, okay? What she was trying to do was, was create a narrative, a lie, an alibi, an alibi. <laughs> now, while at the hospital after the Destiny shooting, the mother, Robin Howington, allegedly tried to destroy her cell phone so she could hide illegal marijuana sales that involved her. So she was doing some illicit deeds, right? Illicit deeds, make sure you follow illicit deeds on Facebook, but she was doing something illegal uh, and it was uh, evidence on her phone and she tried to throw water on her phone to try to destroy it. But she, I guess she don't know how forensics actually works because you could actually still get information off of a cell phone even if it does get uh, contaminated with water. Now, she told authorities that she did not want investigators to learn of illegal marijuana sales that she had conducted, which I think that's a bullshit story too. Now, according to WATE, the mother, Robin Howington, tried to disable her cell phone by running it underwater at a hospital. A witness claimed that Robin Howington tried to pass off the cell phone to her and even offered her money to take it. Now, the mother has not yet entered a plea in the charges. Now, let me go ahead and give you guys the fair usage. Let's go ahead and tell these uh, news stories. Let's get it. 
federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, let's get it. It is horrid to think of a child dying in any manner, much less being shot. The mother of the five-year-old who died in a shooting in Fountain City last weekend now facing charges. Knoxville police arrested Robin Howington yesterday for tampering with evidence. The warrant says she wiped and stashed the gun outside the home on Balsam Drive in Fountain City and moved other items at the crime scene. Howington was released this morning on bond. 10 News reporter Shannon Smith learning more about the family and that little girl who died. She joins us now live from Fountain City. Shannon. Robin, that little girl's obituary says her name was Destiny Oliver. She's a student, was a student at Fountain City Elementary School. And that principal just sent us a statement saying their hearts are going out to the family during the loss this tragic time. There are counselors at the school right now for students and teachers who need it. Now, her obituary says that Destiny was survived by three brothers. And people who knew her say she was such a sweet little girl. The details of how a five-year-old girl was shot in Fountain City Saturday are still unfolding. Her obituary shows this picture of five-year-old Destiny Oliver. She was a student at Fountain City Elementary School and is survived by three brothers. DCS says it cannot comment where those siblings are now due to an ongoing investigation. Destiny's former daycare teacher says she was a sweet child and her favorite student in a former class. Her teacher says she's crushed, in shock, and doesn't know how to feel. Attorney T. Scott Jones says it's always hard on a community when a child dies. It is horrid to think of a child dying in any manner, much less being shot. Destiny's mother, Robin Howington, is now charged with tampering with evidence related to the crime. Warrants state Howington wiped and stashed the gun that shot her daughter, refused to give police her phone, then put it under running water in hopes of destroying it. Documents say she feared the phone would have evidence of drug sales on it. Police also say Howington admitted to moving items in the home to make the area look normal. If it's your home and a chair's knocked over, you may just, as a matter of course, just reach over and pick that chair up. But you know, when you have situations occur like destroying a cell phone or hiding a weapon or quote unquote wiping a weapon down, uh, you know, those are actually conscious acts. Jones says tampering with evidence is a felony in Tennessee and those found guilty can be sentenced from three to 15 years. Destiny's obituary says she will be buried Friday in Bristol, Virginia. Again, no suspects have been named or arrested in this crime so far. Robin, I'm live in Fountain City. I'll send it back to you. Shannon, thank you very much. Knoxville mother accused of tampering with evidence related to the death of her five-year-old daughter is expected in court tomorrow. 36-year-old Robin Howington was arrested in September after her five-year-old daughter, Destiny Oliver, was shot and killed in their Fountain City home. Knox County court documents show Howington changed her story several times when she spoke to investigators about what happened. Arrest warrants show Howington wiped and stashed the gun and moved other items at the crime scene the night of the shooting. She is expected to appear in court for a preliminary hearing tomorrow. Headlines today, a Knox County mother accused of murder and the death of her five-year-old daughter is set to appear in court. Robin Howington is set to be arraigned on multiple charges. She was arrested in September after her daughter, Destiny Oliver, was shot and killed in a home in Fountain City. She was initially charged with tampering with evidence. Arrest warrants say she wiped and stashed the gun and refused to give investigators her phone. Investigators also say she changed her story several times. Then, just last week, Howington was charged with felony murder, among other charges. Just released today, revealing new details in the case of a five-year-old girl who was shot and killed earlier this month. Her mother, Robin Howington, was charged with two counts of evidence tampering related to that shooting. Now, it happened in the 500 block of Balsam Drive on Saturday, September 14th. New at 4, 6 on your side, reporter Elizabeth Kubel combing through the court documents this afternoon. Joining us now in the studio with what she has uncovered, Elizabeth. 
Search warrant shows Howington changed her story twice when talking to investigators. Her first account that she was sitting at home with her two children when a man came in with a gun and shot her daughter once in the chest before leaving the scene. She later changed her story again, saying her daughter's father came to the home, began arguing and then shot the five year old girl. Investigators, however, viewed video from a neighbor's surveillance camera of Howington trying to hide the gun when they confronted her about it. She changed her story once more saying her two year old son climbed into her closet, used a stool to reach the gun and shot his sister. Howington also admitted to wiping the firearm clean of fingerprints and possible DNA before she threw it into a bush. Police say Howington also tried to destroy her cell phone when officers asked for it. According to the documents, that is because she was trying to hide her involvement with selling drugs and because she realizes what is on her phone may have crucial evidence related to the death of the victim. Wow, y'all hear that? The look in that woman's face right there, that look. I couldn't imagine being an attorney. I cannot imagine being a police officer. And even more so, I couldn't imagine being the boyfriend, the baby dad, or even her own son. The fact that she was willing to sell out anybody and everybody who would have taken a fall for her. And if you ask me, I think that's the nature of the society that we're in right now. And the fact that you have these type of people who just believe that they are infallible. Just because you give birth now and you're somebody's parent does not mean that you can do no wrong and nobody can tell you any different. Even though there have been a ton of situations that have happened where women haven't been properly uh, held accountable for the things that they've done. But that's not always the case. But it's, it's the case in a lot of situations. Which is why somebody like this mother felt that it was so easy and as, so, and as long as she continued to keep telling lies, eventually somebody else is going to have to take the fall for her. And just maybe, just maybe, she was hoping that either her simp baby dad, I'm not calling him a simp, I'm just saying maybe she was hoping he would simp for her. Or her simp boyfriend, not calling him a simp either, but I guess she was thinking that maybe one of them would feel bad for her and just take the blame and fall on their sword for her honor. Which is what a lot of men do. Men give their lives for a lot of women out there unjustly. They don't even ask questions a lot of times. But in this case, I hope this baby gets her justice. Again, her name is Destiny Oliver and that beautiful baby was just five years old. And right there, one of my favorite pictures of her, not only is this one, I like this one, but this one more importantly, because this picture puts it into proper perspective. This baby was going to kindergarten, kindergarten. She was a baby. And I've said this before, and it's a shame that we will advocate for grown people more than we will advocate that have already got a chance to see life and live life and do a lot of things. We will advocate more for grown people then in situations like this, and then the vitriol is not nearly as high when you have somebody who hasn't even attended a day of school yet. This baby deserved a chance. This baby deserved to grow up to be something great. Her mother failed her. And like I said, I don't know that we'll ever get the real story because it doesn't seem like this mom is going to be forthcoming about why she did it. I hope they throw a bunch of years at her in prison and just get her up out of here. If we never get a real story, then we just never get a real story. But fellas, y'all got to be more careful about who y'all lay down with and who y'all procreate with to the ladies. Understand that the power of life is an innate gift and you guys have an amazing gift and amazing power and please use it responsibly. If you do not want to have kids or if you're not vetting your men properly, then you need to be more careful about what type of men you're dealing with. If you don't want to have kids by certain men, please, I ask and beg you guys to stop taking it out on these babies. That's all I can ask. We're the AFC where we advocate for children first. I want to say RIP to that sweet angel, Destiny Oliver, just five years old, man. RIP, sweetheart. RIP. 
This is your boy DJ Just J. We're the AFC where we advocate for children first. From my heart to yours, I love you guys. And y'all have a great night. And we'll see y'all on the next stream.